Hi, and following on from my customizing your user interface in terms of preparation for raiding in the Tomb of Sargeras, I thought I'd follow it up with a few targeted video guides on using LVUI. Now I have a longer video on using LVUI and setting up your UI in my add-ons playlist, and of course you can go there. But just for a few shorter targeted ones, I'm going to show you in this particular video how to customize your action bars, how to customize your frames, and then in the next one, I'll discuss another aspect and so on. Okay, so let's deal with action bars first of all. So we go into LVUI, and here they are. We first of all need to decide which ones we want enabled. A lot of them are not enabled by default, uh, including the micro bar, oddly enough. The micro bar is what contains your character info, spell book, blah, 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 blah. Um, so with these ones, I pretty much make sure all of them are enabled. Not all of them are enabled by default. Then the other thing is to get them to the size you want before we start moving them around. Now with bar one and so on, first of all, uh, you can decide how many buttons you want. So if I'm, I'm just going to toggle anchors here, we'll just peel one off. So that's bar five. Now, what we can do here is, at the moment, it's uh, 12 buttons showing. I can reduce that to as many or as few as I like. 12 buttons being the maximum. But I don't all have to have it in one row. If I decide, for example, there's going to be six per row, then it does it in two rows of six. Some people prefer that. And it means you can put it, say, uh, under unit frames and things like that if it's more convenient. In my particular case, though, I'm going to have them actually stretched out in a row. The other thing to amend is the button size. You, you maybe don't need them that large. You could reduce them a little. So I usually find rather than using the slider, it's easier just to type in a number there. Okay, you might want to make it as small as you can whilst you can still see what it is. Oh, icon's a bit small there for me. So maybe I use 20. And then probably easier to make all of them the same thing. So once I've selected them so the buttons are all the same, there is something that you'll notice when you go in first of all in LVUI, again, for some reason, some of the action bars have a backdrop like this and some don't. What I would strongly suggest is that you either have the backdrop on all of them if they're going to be stacked together or on none of them, otherwise they sort of get higgledy-piggledy. I prefer not having the backdrop. So what I usually do is go through each one and make sure that backdrop is not enabled. Now, before I make any other alterations, what I'm going to do is to move them to where I want them moving to. Now, the way we do this is with toggle anchors. And at this point, we can also start to move some of the frames around as well. Now, to begin with, this, this will take you some time to get it set up just right. So at the moment, I'm just going to pull things away from where I want my action buttons. Bar one, I might put down there. Now, let's say you want to stack it up to something there, but you're having a little bit of trouble with the mouse. What you can do is use the nudge. You get it to roughly where you want, and then you use these things to move them a little at a time. Okay, uh, so then I might want bar two in there. Again, just use the nudge to get it just right. Now what I'm going to do is to start to move some of the unit frames around as I'd want them. Now, I personally prefer to have my um, player frame, shows my own health bar, as well as the target frame, that of my target obviously, around the character, maybe a little bit below. Again, you can use the nudge if you want to sort of make sure it's nice and tidy. Um, I'm not hugely bothered about being totally symmetrical, but that's a useful thing if you are. You'll notice a target cast bar really long here. That's again a setting, that's not a default setting, it would normally be the just like the player cast bar, but I'll come to the reason for that uh, later on. Now, there's plenty of other things to change here, but at this point, I'm just going to go back and, and see how it looks. First of all, you check if you're happy with that, um, because if you wanted to change any of these button size, you might need to do that again. You might need to go back into toggle anchors and keep nudging things just so that right. But here's something interesting, because some people don't like to have these action bars showing, because they're just needlessly taking space. If you know your key binds, you don't really need to see what's each one. I keep saying I sometimes come onto characters after a while, and I don't remember what I've bound to what. There is something else you can do, which is a halfway house. You, as long as you remember where you've put your bars, you can click on this button here, which says mouse over. So let's do this for all of them, and they're disappearing, but don't worry. 
A bit of the pet bar as well, even though the rogue doesn't have one. Yeah, so over there we go. So what I do here is, if I put my mouse over where these bars are, they will then show. And what that allows me to do, if I want to open up my spell book, let's say I want to put a spell in a particular position, I can still do that. I can still go, oh, okay, put that in, well, let's say I put it in the C3 position as well. Get rid of that, killing spree. I'll probably regret that later when I forget to put it back. Um, so you can still put your abilities down there. But what it means is just when you're generally in combat or anything else, it's nice and clean. So it is the best of both worlds for a lot of people because you have a much cleaner UI. But at the same time, if as an emergency, it's like, oh, where did I put that thing? You could sort of scroll down here and have a look as well. It also allows you the option of potentially making them a little larger than you would ideally like. Now, there are other options in here. Again, you can modify with such as the button spacing, the height of the backdrop spacing, of course, doesn't apply if you don't have the backdrop on, the height multiply, width multiplier. You can vary any of these things to get it looking just as you would want to. But at that particular point, that is where I would go with the action buttons. In terms of where to place them, of course, that is entirely up to you, wherever you feel is the most convenient, and it's up to you whether you want the mouse over there or not. I'm just going to remove it now because uh, I'm not that bothered about having them not showing. Now the next thing we're going to have a look at are the unit frames. So in the main unit frames uh, panel, first of all, we can have either enabled or not. Why would we not? Uh, so you can also see which ones you want enabling. Player frame, boss frames, raid frames, target frame, arena frames, focus frame, and party frames. If there's any of those you don't want showing, you could tick them off here, but uh, you know, Quite why would you? I don't know. There are also options here, for example, the font. Now, some people have asked me about the font on mine. Uh, we can see there. You can actually uh, change that here if you wanted. So I have mine set on Action Man. Uh, we could change it. So you can change the, sh uh, the font that you want. There's a Diablo type one there, look. Uh, but I like this one. You can also, of course, change the font size, okay, to suit you. Might put mine on 12 actually. Uh, so there's various options in here that you can play about with as well. In the player frame, by default, there are aura bars on the player and target frame as it comes to. Now, if you want to get rid of those, uh, they're in aura bars here. Now, at the moment, I don't have them enabled. Uh, but I'll tick on enable so that I can show you what I mean here. So if I use Adrenaline Rush, for example, it gives me a little bar there showing the timer. Because I use Tell Me When to track cooldowns and buffs and important buffs and things like that, I prefer not to have that enabled in my particular case. Apart from anything else, it gets in the way of my boss notifications, but more on that in a future video. So I personally disable the aura bars on both the player frame and the target frame where it's also an option. So when you go into that particular frame, uh, and the drop down menu, you can. there's various options you can have here. So we go back to player frame, you can modify their health bars there. So buffs, debuffs uh, are all something that you can use to modify it and just play about with it, play about with the options in terms of what you want it to do. Hit a training dummy a few times, see what works best for you. As I say, what works best for me may not be works best for you. Now I'm going to go onto the target frame because I mentioned about the cast bar before. So I made my cast bar quite wide, uh, much wider than it would be on the player frame, for example, which is a standard 180 width, which is the same width as these bars. And the actual frame bars itself, you can change the width of. I think by default, it's actually longer and I reduced mine to 180. So you can change that as well. You can change the height. Again, modify it to what you think is going to be best for you. But the reason I made the target cast bar so long is, and I'll show you in toggle anchors, is because often as a melee myself, I'm on interrupt duty and I need to be able to see when my target is casting. So what I tend to do is rather, I, rather than have the target cast bar actually under the target frame, I tend to put it here. And because it's longer, I can actually see the cast happening. It gives me a much better notification of when it's casting, especially if I've got to interrupt the next cast. Or, and it also, with it being a, a longer bar, allows me to see the name of the spell it's casting. Because sometimes you get a mob 
where you've got to interrupt, you've got to interrupt a specific spell. Maybe it casts other things as well, and you don't want to interrupt that. So you can put it there. That's that's a recommendation for me. Not everyone needs to do that. Now, now that we're at it, there are other frames to have a look at as well. So we've got the party frames there. These are the frames that are showing if you are in a dungeon. We've got the standard rain frames here. And then if you end up in a 40-man situation like Alterac Valley or something, we've got the 40-man raid frames here. Now, in terms of where to place those, it sort of depends on your role and your personal preference. There are some players who don't want them showing at all. Uh, for example, if you, I mean, if you like a rogue like this one, and you're not going to do a lot to anyone else, you might actually feel you can do without it altogether. Uh, so you can just disable them. Quite a lot of DPS will just stick it out to the side because they're not particularly interested, but it allows them to sort of monitor if they want to glance over to the left. I personally, stick them down here. I'm going to stick the largest one first. So we'll put the uh, the raid frames out. I'm just going to nudge it so it's flush there. Now the reason I do that, and there's certain advantages to this, for healers it's sort of fairly obvious because you can attract your attention over here and it's not much of a glance down to look here. Uh, it's much more of an effort to sort of look over here whilst not having this area in your peripheral vision. But the other thing is, as, as a paladin main, I sometimes do like a healer need to sort of monitor what's going on. Not as much as a healer, obviously. Uh, just to use maybe a lay on hands very now and, every now and then, or a blessing of protection, or a cleanse even sometimes, or a blessing of freedom, whatever it happens to be. It's much more convenient to move my cursor from round about here, where I might be clicking on different targets, just to down there uh, on a frame uh, as well. So that's my personal preference. Now, when it comes to the raid frames, let's have a look at some options we've got there. So if we go down to the raid frames, uh, there are a few things we can do for healers. We have a heal prediction mode, which shows an incoming heal prediction bar on the unit frame. Also, it says there displays a slightly different colored bar for incoming heals. Can't really show you that on here, of course. But some interesting ones are, we can obviously change the width and height. Again, change the dimensions to what's gonna suit you. We can also decide how many groups we're going to have showing on this is the standard rain frames not the raid 40 frames so sometimes when you've got like more in the group and you can't see people particularly for heroic uh, beyond group five well you could increase the number of groups that are showing here you can also decide on spacing and visibility and so on but here you can also decide which way it sort of grows you can at the by default it's right and then down in terms of groups some people prefer it the other way up some people prefer to, for it to go up. And then if you don't have fully filled groups, instead of hanging in midair, it sort of starts from the bottom and moves up. And some people prefer that. I have had that in the past, uh, but in actual fact, I just found it confusing after a while. So I changed it back to the default right and then down. So there we go. Those are some of the main options for customizing your unit frames and for customizing your action bars. So have a play about with those, see if any of it helps you out. There are plenty of other options, of course, in LVI, and by all means, go and explore those. But I will be doing another two or three videos to follow up on showing you other aspects of using LVI to customize your overall user interface as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.